This is Alvaro with the channel Uniquely Mary, and I know that many of you may never have the chance to come here. That's okay. I want to take you on a tour, just a short tour, and I want you to imagine that you are here. Imagine that you're here with me. You see that there are thousands of people here. There are more coming. Today is Saturday, July 24th, 2021. So it's a big pilgrimage day. Imagine that you are here. Know that many of these people here all have this interest, have this curiosity. Some have faith and some do not. But I want you to come with me as a pilgrim of faith to console Our Lady, to come and visit your mother's house. Join me in this beautiful place. I will be showing you as if you were here, looking at things, describing a few things, but most of the time I'll be in silence because I want you to walk with me. I want you to walk with me to the house of the Blessed Mother, to the house of your mother. I have waited for so long to come here and I know you have as well. So join me as we just go on this short walk. So this is the entrance where you would come in. You have a restaurant on your left. You have a gift shop on your right, which is actually quite a nice gift shop, although really expensive. It is so peaceful here. Notice all the cicadas have been making a lot of noise ever since I've gotten here. The weather it's about the mid-80s, sunny and beautiful. Know that when they found this in the 1890s, there was hardly anything here or it was overgrown. But now in the last 120 years that they've turned it into a beautiful garden which I'm sure is how Our Lady would have had it. And maybe some of these plants have been here ever since she was here. Now this is on a small mountain overlooking Ephesus, but it's not at the summit of the mountain. If you were to go up higher up there, at the top of the mountain, you could actually see the ancient city of Ephesus. As you come in, you see different signs, different things encouraging people to be dressed modestly. You could see off in the distance some of the mountains. Although there was a spring present here ever since and to this day, this would be a water cistern, a way of storing water. This would all have been found when she was here. You're looking at right now a water cistern, the same one that Our Lady would have had and used. Imagine the Blessed Mother walking these places. Now we will begin to go up here. It's a beautiful, beautiful little pathway. Normally there are many more pilgrims, but since it's still early, they're not here. But I will show you a secret back way to get closer. Now let, let me just give you some time so that you can read.
again, please pause the video if you want more time to read. When you look at the different pilgrims, many are Muslim, which is a beautiful thing that the Muslims love Our Lady and that Our Lady considers them also her children. Many, many are Muslim. Many are Turks. Many are from other countries. You hear many other languages spoken from Russia, France, Europe, a few from the United States. Now here we'll, we will be coming up to the bottom of where Mary, Mary's house is. This is a prayer wall where people tie cloths, right now masks. They used to allow this to be tied to where the whole wall was covered with cloth. Now, for the sake of cleanliness, they cut them off. That's one sad change. And people would tie this as a sign of their prayers, or they would write down prayers. But even though they cut them down, Mary still hears their prayers. This is where they have channeled the spring water. There are four faucets. The spring water was here, and it's one of the reasons why Mary and St. John chose this place. Now imagine yourself drinking this water. Now as you can imagine, it tastes amazing, it really does. Walk with me as we go up to her house. Let's stop a moment and imagine this. When they had this house nearly 2,000 years ago, they had no path to get up here. The apostles had to trek through this forest. It was a three-hour trek from Ephesus. Imagine what that would have been like. Now let, let's walk back up. Now imagine that perhaps none of this would have been here. It would have been quite simple, just as Our Lady would have it. Here they have a souvenir shop. Bottle so that you can fill up with the spring water. And then we are coming up the back way.
Now in the house you can buy candles. To leave your intentions for the Blessed Mother. Very simple. This path is closed, but this led up to back behind the house. Now, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich says that Our Lady would go up behind on the hill and she would make the stations of the cross and she would meditate on Our Lord's sufferings. Those stones were found when they made the initial excavations and findings of the house. And those stones, which would have crosses on them made by Our Lady, are now held in a museum in Turkey. Now right next to the house, that's what the inside of the house looks like. Right next to the house are verses from the Quran showing that even in, even in the Quran they honor Our Lady. Now when they first came here, they realized that Greek Orthodox from a nearby village of Shirinze would come every year to what they called the house or the portal of Our Lady. And they would come and honor her each and every year. Now here you can see the thousands of pilgrims lined up all day long. And this is the house. This is the house of your mother. Take a look at it. Gaze at it. Now when they found it, the bottom, probably fifth of it, that you can see, is original. That's dated down to the first century. That's all that they found. They found ruins and rubble. But they were faithful to the description by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich of the house. And they built it using ancient material so that it would be an exact replica of where she would have lived. This room right here that you were looking at is where she slept. It was on the right side of the house. The house was shaped like a basic cross. This is where she slept, and this is where she died. In fact, right there inside is an image of the Dormition, of when Our Lady dies with, surrounded by the Apostles. That's where she died, where the Apostles were. Not in Jerusalem, but here where she lived the last seven to nine years of her life. In that middle section would have been the main place where she lived, worked, cooked, and prayed. That's where Mass would have been celebrated. And this would have been the entrance area, kind of like a reception area. The house is some 20 to 30 meters long and about 14 meters wide. There is a room on the other side that because of some foundation issues was not rebuilt. But you can see it is simple, it is beautiful, and the more and more that I am here, the more in love with this wonderful house. My friends, I hope you have enjoyed this little, so to speak, virtual pilgrimage to Our Lady, Our Lady's house. Know her great love for you. Know how much she desires for you. And watch some of my other videos so you can find out how to get here. So you too can experience this wonderful place.